Okay, I think we'll get started. Uh, so today we're going to start the first of several labs here um, working with the built-in UART communication on the PIC 12F 1822. So UART stands for Universal Asynchronous uh, Receive and Transmit. And we're gonna focus here on just transmitting a 8-bit signal to the oscilloscope and also to the computer. So um, we're going to need a USB to UART converter, and I'll show you the one that I'm using here. Very inexpensive on Amazon. Works pretty well. Optional oscilloscope. It's kind of fun to see the signal come in, uh, but if you don't have an oscilloscope, that's okay. And then on your computer, uh, make sure that you have some kind of Python. Um, you have Python installed and some kind of IDE to write a program. We're going to use a very simple IDE, the Thony IDE, but um, certainly anything would work here. Now we're going to run into a bunch of new registers. Uh, there's a register, there, there's a set of registers uh, that deal with the UART capability. And uh, so we'll talk about each of these uh, as we go through. So with that, uh, I think I'll get over to uh, the computer and we'll start working through this. Okay, I think I'm going to start with just the dot cam here. And let me first just show uh, the equipment here. So this is the this is the UART to USB. It's also an SPI and a I2C, so we'll use this for other things as well. So very good, um, a very good device. Let me go here now to show you the where it is on Amazon. Uh, so you can just search for this. And again, only $9.99, so uh, very good deal. Uh, nice device to have. I have noticed that um, I have noticed that on Windows 10, I was never able to get this set up correctly. Uh, it did work right away uh, on Windows 11. And uh, actually, yeah, let me show you that. Um, Windows 11, it just comes in, as soon as you plug it in, it comes in as a USB to serial, and in this case, it'll be on COM4. We'll come back to this when we write a, prog a simple program in Python to read in the data. Uh, we'll have to know what COM it's on. And then uh, I think maybe needed a little help from ChatGPT to get it working on my Unix machine, but otherwise worked very easily. And that's mainly because I don't, I'm not very good at Unix. I uh, didn't um, know exactly how to how to do it uh, just from a Unix perspective. So very nice device. Uh, didn't quite work quite as well for me anyway uh, with Windows 10. All right, let's go back to the dot cam. Uh, so uh, let's just quickly see this in action. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect the receive and the transmit pins together. So this, when you buy this, it comes with a jumper across there, so you can just send a signal to itself. So go back to uh, the full screen, and we'll run a Python program that works with this guy. So this is all just stuff before we get to the microcontroller. Um, let's look at this program here. So this will be on this this Python file is available on the. GitHub as well. So um, pretty simple program here. We're going to, uh, the port is COM4 as we saw earlier, and that will be, depend on your machine where that uh, comes in at. And this seems strange why a baud rate of this low. We're gonna actually work with this baud rate um, as our working example. So that's what we've got here, although this could, this could change. Uh, and so I'll go ahead and just run this. This should send a letter and then uh, receive the letter. So let's go ahead and run that so that there it's sent. The letter B, receive the letter B. If I change that to an A, um, then, uh, well, I guess, yeah. Um, 
So, yeah, this is just, yeah. So I wrote an A, and then I just, this is just a print statement, so this really doesn't mean much. Um, so we'll have to, this is just to alert the user what we sent. So go ahead and run this, and we get this back. So this is working just like it should, and so uh, that's great. Now I'm going to um, take this out now, and we'll use it. And I'm going to go ahead and just remove the transmit button, uh, or transmit, and I'm going to stick this on our output here. And you can see the green light starting to flash. Uh, let me go back now to the full dot cam. You can see the green light flashing. This is getting information in from this chip, as we'll see in a moment. All right. Uh, so we know this, we know this is working, it's talking to our computer, uh, and so now it's a matter of can we get the microchip to talk to the, um, to the UART. So this has a built-in uh, UART, and there's a number of important uh, file registers associated with that. This, if you want to follow along, this is on page 272. Chapter 26 is where uh, the UART information starts. And we're just going to use this in a very classic way, the asynchronous trans transmission. The This is enhanced, enhanced sig sig um, synchronous UART, so you can go into synchronous mode as well. There's like automatic baud rate finding, but we're not going to get into all of that. We'll just stick with a pretty classic um, serial communication. All right, so uh, let me go to the, yeah, let me go to the code now. And we will. look now at the code and so configuration bits just like we talked about in the blinking the LED video so if you haven't looked at that first video a lot of more configuration bits than what we're used to from the PIC 200 uh, lab course or the PIC um, 675 lab course the include file as always and then this uh, front information here to tell the uh, program counter where to start with the main program and so on. Uh, again, our structure is going to be main and then a main loop. This first bit is all stuff we talked about in the um, in the blinking the LED. So I'm not going to go through this uh, all that much other than to highlight here. These four bits is where are where we choose uh, the um, speed of our pro or the, the internal clock, and I'm going to set this to four megahertz. So um, you can just look on page 65 to um, convert that to whatever you would like. Uh, then the rest of this is just making sure that we're all digital I/O and that we have the right inputs and outputs on the pins. I've labeled here, this section is where we actually are starting to set up the UART. So let's go through this um, step by step here. So we're going to, so this is, this is kind of a little bit unfortunate, but we, we learned about this bank cell that for particular special registers, they'll come up here in this aqua blue and it will automatically shift to that. Well, it turns out that uh, the these two registers, the SBPRG high uh, and the SP, SBPRG low registers do not automatically come up. So if you were to type them in here, bank cell, this, they wouldn't show up. In fact, I'll go ahead and go ahead and do that. See how that has it doesn't know what this is, and if we were to try to build this program, we would get we'd get an error. So we'll remove that, but we have to get to those registers. So what we can do is we can go to page 22 here, and 
look at what bank we're in. We're in the same bank as all of these registers for the uh, UART setup. So we're kind of, I'm kind of cheating here. I'm doing a bank sell to the BODCON, which will take me to bank three. So now I'm in bank three, and now I can deal with these. So that's a little frustrating, um, but uh, that's what it is. And then how do we know wh which one? Well, we see here 19C. The little H there is for hex. And then on our code, the, the OX here means hex. So 19C hex. Uh, and then 19B is the low register there. All right, so um, we are not going to be using the high register. We're only going to be using uh, the low register. Now, um, we want to go to uh, the baud rate, page 282. Oh, I hope I have that here. I think I do. Yeah, page 282. Uh, so we're working with four megahertz, right? We set that as our oscillator. So I find in here four megahertz. We've set the, the high uh, to zero. And we have not yet, but we will set the BRG16 to zero. So that means we're in this setup here. And I want to get a 300 baud rate. Now this tells us that, so we can only use decimal numbers, or real numbers, uh, I'm sorry, we can only use integers uh, in the, for these, for these factors. Uh, and <clears throat> We're going to have some degree of error, but a very small error here. We'll actually see that error show up on the um, the oscilloscope. So a 0.16 error. So that means the baud rate, I think I calculated that, should be 300.5. We're going to actually see it's coming out to be 301 as the baud rate. But um, that's, that's just coming from this bit. So this number here is 207 in binary. So 207 in binary, and we send that to the SPBRGL register. Um, now, we want to clear this BG16. So I think I dropped these on the floor. We'll go look at our BODCON register, BGR16. That's bit three. So we want to clear bit three because we only want to use this 8-bit baud generator. So um, that's all we need for this. That just means are you using an 8-bit number or a 16-bit number as your divider there to determine the baud rate. Now this was tricky. This one took me a long time to find because it's not in the um, data the data sheet. So the data sheet has a little example on how to set things up, which was pretty helpful, but it didn't have have this. Uh, we do need to go to the alternative pin function, and I I had always thought that you only need to do that if you actually want to implement those, which in this case, in this case, I ended up doing so and setting this to pin four instead of pin one. Uh, but you do have to do it no matter what. So um, if you want the transmission to be pin four, then we have to set the bit in this register. So let me show you that register. Hopefully I can find that quickly. So this is on page uh, 114. Uh, this is the alternative pin, and um, we want to set bit two. Um, so bit two, we can set the transmit function to, I think I said pin one earlier, pin zero or pin four. And so we're going to set it, so we can set that to one. So that means pin four. So we can see here, pin four will be the output pin. Okay. Now we have to go to the transmit register. 
So this is the transmit status and control register. And we have to do a few things. So bit five, um, TXEN, that's, that's enabling the UART transmission. Uh, we want to go to bit two. Um, and we are not using the BRGH. So that was back, uh, let's see now, probably lost that. Oh, here it is. BRGH is zero there. So that's what we're doing here. So we're clearing, right here, we're clearing the BRH zero. Then uh, we go to, um, the sync number four. Okay, we need to set this into asynchronous mode. So again, this can be um, synchronous, which is not sort of the traditional UART. So we're going to clear this so it's asynchronous. So that's bit four. And then bit six is do we want to transmit nine bits uh, or eight bits? Now there isn't a parity bit per se, but I think this is what you would use if you needed to talk to a device that needed to have a parity bit. Then um, even though we are only transmitting, we do need to set one thing in the receiving register. So the RS, RC, STA, and that's only the seventh bit here. Uh, we have to enable the serial ports, uh, and so that's on that um, register. All right, so that's the tough part. That's getting all of these registers in place and trying to um, get those working. Now, let's look at the main loop. So we've got everything set. Main loop will be fairly simple. Uh, one thing here is we are checking. So how this works is as soon as the T-Rex register, uh, the T-Reg register gets filled, it then immediately sends that and it will send a flag to PRT, to the fourth bit on PIR, um, peripheral interrupt uh, register one, and this is the flag saying that it's working, it's going. So we want to check to see that that's empty and not going. So if the flag is set, um, then so then the flag will be set, it's ready to go, then it will skip here to the main loop. Otherwise, it'll just go in this circle here until it's, until it's ready. Okay, so it'll keep checking there. Now, <clears throat> Let's, and so we had to, to go over to the bank that had the PIR1 um, register. We're not using any interrupts here, so we're not enabling the interrupts. We don't have to do any of that, but we are looking at the flags that arise. Then we uh, switch over to the T-Rex and fill this. So this is the bit we're going to send. Uh, I just chose this at random here. And this is uh, the decimal form. In hex form, it's 5D. And so let's, let's kind of, I guess, confirm that. So oh, where are we at here? D, this is, so this is uh, 1, 2, no 2s, 4, 8, 4, 12, 13, yep, D. And then this is 4 and 1, 5, so 5D in hex. That's going to get moved to the T-Rex register, and that's going to send. Now, this was also something that I don't think is in the data sheet. Uh, you, you, you need to always go to the bank that your pins are on. So um, we, we, we send this to uh, bank zero. Then this is just a delay, and so I'm not going to talk about the delay. We've used that in the previous pick series. We also talked about it a little bit in the um, uh, blinking LED of this series. So all that does is put a little delay in, uh, and then we go back to the main loop, and it just keeps going. So this is just going to continuously send the this particular bit of data out. Okay, so... Um, Let's go now to uh, the dot cam here. And uh, let me move now 
my, my camera on me over to the scope. And so, try to get the scope here. Now we're not, right now we're not seeing the full signal coming in. It's going off the edge of the screen. But what I want to alert you to is uh, I've set up a couple of cursors here, this lead cursor and this second cursor. And so these are those results. And what's nice is it will give us a one over the difference. So this is one, this is the time it takes to send one bit. And if you take the reciprocal of that, that gives you your baud rate. And I, no, oh, this is not really showing up well, isn't it? Let's see if I can improve that at all. Well, not showing up. No, sorry about that. But I can just report the number. 301.2. So there's a bit of an error in the BOD calculation because it's restricted to integers. Uh, and so uh, we don't have that exactly 300. Now I'm going to change this horizontal axis and um, get my cursors out of the way here. And what you'll notice down here, this is a nice scope here. Um, it's got a UART capability, a UART decoder. And so again, yep, hard to see here, but um, this says 5D. So it, this is actually the code for, for 5D. And um, this, my scope has locked in pretty well to the signal. So uh, don't, this is a continuous run you can maybe see sort of the fluctuations, the noise up there, particularly up in here. Um, and so it's locked in on that. All right, well, let's now, I'll, I guess I'll take this back to me. And let's go out to the full dock, or my full computer here. And let's pull up Thony. And we're now gonna switch to the program called Wait Serial 2. This is on GitHub as well. And so let's walk through this program. Uh, we need a couple of things. These are standard, so these will just work right away. But this PYN put, that you do need to get uh, in the packages. So you have to install that as a package. Then we know that this is COM4. We've already checked that. Baud rate is 301, as we saw from the scope. Uh, and then this is just um, to escape the program by pressing this escape key. So that's not so important. Uh, then down here, uh, we are going to um, just keep running and it's going to be scanning for uh, anything coming in as a signal. So uh, we do see the light flashing here. So hopefully this will work right away after. Um, so what we should see coming in on the screen here is 5D. So let's go ahead and run that. And there it is, hex data 5D. And it's just keep just continuing to do that. So I'm going to just hit escape and that will exit that. So um, that's, that's um, transmitting those data. Let me, um, I guess let's, let's just for good measure, um, let's go ahead and come back to um, the program. I'm going to reprogram this. We'll send a different, uh, different uh, hex value. Hopefully this will work pretty quickly. Uh, so 5D, uh, let's see. Um, let's add a one here and we'll put a zero here. And let's build that, make sure that builds correctly. 
okay, built correctly. And let's go ahead and uh, hopefully that will write. All right. And I'll move here to the the oscilloscope and yeah again sorry you can't see this but the waveform has changed here now matches what we've put in and this is now reading not 5d but 75 because we made those changes so let's see now when we run the um, so I'll go ahead and put this back and we will run the um, Python program and show we should get 7.5 coming in as the hex value. So let's go ahead and try that. Seven five. Okay. All right. So that is the the very basic here UART transmit. Now this is it's pretty cool, I think, but what's going to be really cool is when we can take in an analog signal, write that to a, end up writing that to the TREG, and then that will be sent to the computer, and then that computer will store that, and we can plot those data in Excel or anything else. So that will be the next video. We'll talk about um, actually combining this then with the analog to digital conversion. But for now, that's it for this lab.